am addressing specifically to Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie, when James beat you, your son saw that. Your son warned me about James before you moved in with James. When I was helping you pack, when I was helping you pack your stuff at that house on 1st Street, right across from Pump and Pantry, because you were moving to South Dakota to live with uh, James Payton. And your son warned me, and I had a conversation with you. You remember that conversation? Where I said I was certain that she was going to leave there. She was going to be stuck all by herself with no friends anywhere nearby. And James was going to beat her. She said he'd never do that. She also said if things went south with James, that she'd give me an honest chance. Now that honest chance isn't important. It's not. Because you know who I love more than Jamie? You know who I love more than Natalie and more than Rabbit? Jamie's son. Jamie Lee Curtis. When you left with James, I was scared for you. The things I was scared of that we talked about, they happened, didn't they? I didn't lie about those things, and I didn't lie about that conversation about the day that you moved out of Chapel, Nebraska to go to South Dakota. Who was it that helped you move, Jamie? Who helped you pack? That's right, it was me. When I, I was on my way to Virginia to see Natalie, who was it that you called and said you needed a hero? That's right, it was me. Did I show up? That's right, I did. Did I help you pack? That's right, I did. Did I watch your son? That's right, I did. So, uh, Jamie should have turned in James then so that he doesn't get to do that to other people. So that he gets to sit and think about the consequences of beating on women. But she never did. Then, just prior to Natalie dying, James was stalking Jamie. He was only able, able to do so because she hadn't turned him in when she should have. And, uh, you know, instead of calling the cops and having James arrested, you know what she did? She blamed me. Told me that James got her address from me. Told me that I needed to fix it. I couldn't fix it. All I could think to do is to expose James. That's it. Make it public so if anything happens to Jamie, because she was supposed to get a hold of me to let me know that her and the boy were safe. She was supposed to get a hold of me once a week to let me know that her and the boy were safe. And she didn't. And I was fucking scared shitless for her and the boy. At least if I expose the person who did these things, one of two things will happen. One, he will be deterred from doing so because he's less likely to get away with it. Or two, this is a real big one. If he goes down there and he kills Jamie and kills the boy, the police know immediately who to go after. I didn't know what else to do. Now James, he might have a girlfriend right now that he's beating. I exposed James to try to keep them safe. I exposed James because Jamie didn't. And Jamie not doing so put so many others at risk, including her and my favorite person on the planet, her son. Both at risk. 
and instead of going after the predator, she goes after me. Jamie Lee Curtis. You knew that story about the owl was true. You knew the story about my phone was true. You knew the story about me being on crutches was true. And you getting those crutches from your boss. You knew that was true too. Jamie, I didn't know how to keep you safe. You told me to do something. I, I did the only thing I fucking could. <clears throat> I'm sorry I called him a rapist. Will you stop being a fucking shitty person to me now? See, when I called James Payton a rapist, that's when Jamie threw me away. She didn't throw me away for talking about her meth habit. She didn't throw me away for talking about the shit that she put me through. She threw me away for calling her predator a rapist. It's the same thing Natalie should have done. Tim Beeson was trying to help her by goading me into a fight. By use of fighting words, basically. By pushing my buttons and pushing my buttons and pushing my buttons until I react. And then going, see, 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 he's dangerous. Tim Beeson was a contributing factor. I have proof that he threatened me and my friends and my family. I have proof of it. Before Natalie was dead, and he was one of many that the cops didn't give a shit about. Not in Colorado, not in Nebraska. And because of their negligence, when Natalie died, they did everything they could to cover up the fact that they didn't do their fucking jobs. They outright refused. And why was I trying to get other people to help me? Because I already knew that if I go into a police station by myself, they're going to do exactly what it is that they did to me. I've seen them do it to hundreds of others. Seen them with my own two eyes. So don't give me your bullshit. Don't give me your fucking bullshit, Jamie. James stalked you to your new apartment. And instead of going after the predator who is stalking you, who assaulted you, you took it out on the man who rescued you on multiple occasions. How many times did I rescue you, Jamie? How many times did I help you move? How many times did I cover for you so that you wouldn't get in trouble? How many times did I take the blame so you wouldn't lose your kid? How many times did I keep my mouth shut so that you wouldn't lose your kid? And just in case you still have that thing going where you don't believe in keeping secrets from the boy. I miss you, Z. Nobody loves you more than your mom. You need to know that. There isn't anyone who loves you more than your mom. Not even me. Sometimes I think I do. But a mom's got to make tough decisions. The decisions that she made, they made a... They may have been the right ones, they may have been the wrong ones, but I don't know because I'm not your mother. I don't know the whole situation. I don't know the sacrifices that she's had to make. I know the sacrifices that I've made for both of you, though, boy. You know me. Z, no matter what anyone tells you about me, no matter what anybody says, you know the truth. You know who I am in person. So does your mom. Even if she says otherwise, she does know. 
She knows how much I love her and she knows how much I love you. You know, when your mom was uh, wanting to date me and she was all wishy-washy, I just wanted to run. I just wanted to take it all back. Never ask her out to begin with. As soon as she got wishy-washy like that, I, I knew it was coming. I tried to tried to retract and just be friends, but she wasn't okay with that. That made her feel rejected, and thought of not having either one of you in my life over that. I tried hard. I tried hard to force myself to. be physically intimate because that's what your mom wanted but not when she was sober so when she was drunk it was always another dude who and that's not the point boy have sex when you're old enough you know don't let people slut shame you like you're a terrible person if you if you don't want to be tied down or if you want to be with somebody else, you know, I, I slut shamed some people. I really did. And I know that it's wrong. But I did it because I knew that it would hurt them in the way that they knew that they were hurting me. I didn't used to be that way before what happened in Virginia. The situation with your mom and I when you were still a real little kid, it's still tough for me to, to handle. It's still something that I get depressed about every day. But it's not your fault, boy. I just don't understand hints. It's an autistic trait, and I didn't choose it. And your mom didn't understand it. Like, if I, I've been in the situation once, I, I can learn from it, and the next time I can do better. But when you've never been in a relationship, and the one person that you, you think is serious, you know, she just keeps changing her mind and changing her mind, and so many other dudes are going through the same thing with her. Like, you know, she... I didn't push it, your mom did. And I, I got real scared because she wanted me to get the hints instead of telling me straight up. And she did tell me straight up when she was drunk. You know, so it's not like she never told me straight up, but never when she was sober. So she and I never had that kind of relationship. And after that, I didn't want to have that kind of a relationship with anyone. Sometimes I think I love you more than your mom because of the choices that your mom made that put you in, in jeopardy and put you in an unsafe position. But then I look at where she's at and the scenario, at least that I was aware of, and I can understand how she didn't have the ability to get out of that situation. Money-wise or support-wise. But really, she had more support than most people I know. Clyde McNett helped a lot. And he wasn't the only one that helped her. There's a lot of dudes who helped your mom throughout the course of her life. Your mom, if she ever tells you she did it all herself, you look her in the eye and you tell her not to lie to you. Some people will lie to you because they think they're protecting you by doing so, but that is never the case. That's why the road to hell is paved in good intentions. I had only good intentions when I went to Virginia. Natalie only had good intentions toward me. But other people's opinions destroyed our lives. You know, when your mother and I were almost going to date, what it came down to is Caroline Coffey's opinion. 
Caroline Coffee had more of a say so than your mother and I. Caroline Coffee, who. Chris Stegeman used to date your mom. And, uh. Caroline Coffee. I asked her out and she said yes. She was the first girl to ever say yes. <laughs> and, uh. I went without eating. I was working at the American in Sydney at the time. I wasn't eating very much. I was trying to save up money for dinner and a movie. I wanted to do it right. So Chris Stegeman calls me one day and he tells me that he's got a surprise for me. I don't know what it is. I'm thinking he's probably bringing some pot to smoke. But no, it's Caroline Coffee. And I was so excited. You know, she said she'd go on a date with me and... I, I was so excited. I was talking for about five minutes before uh, they interrupted me and told me they were a thing. Well, your mom didn't know that they were a thing at the time. Your mom still thought her and Chris were dating. That's Caroline Coffee, And she's the one who got to decide whether I dated your mom or not. I love your mom, dude. I really do. But I love you more, and the things that I had to say about your mother were to keep you safe, and she knows it. No matter what she says, she knows it. 